SVJ action. Let's go. What's up, friends? Yeah, it's been a while since I've been out riding, it feels like. And I've managed to find myself mixed up in this pack of supercars. So while I'm out here doing the damn thing, you and I are about to sketch. Supercars are super cool, but not as cool as super bikes. So today, you and I are sketching the 2020 MotoGP World Champion Johan Mir's Suzuki MotoGP bike. For the sake of the sketch, I'm going to drop it a little bit, get that stance right, maybe add some extra aero bits. Let's see how it turns out. Stay to the end, drop a comment, you and I are dropping lines. So I start this sketch out as I usually do. All right, I lay out the ground line, lay out the front wheel, and then get the wheelbase established. Now for the beginning of this sketch, I am using a very thin pencil, which is a Prismacolor brand pencil that is a harder pigment or a harder graphite, if you will. Uh, so it draws lighter. It's actually wax based, so it's not really graphite. I, I don't really know what the material is but it, it's easier to get a very light line with a very thin versus your standard Prismacolor. So I'm blocking in the sketch with a very thin just to get my proportions right. Uh, now you see here, I'm starting to lay in that front fairing and I've got it hugging the front wheel a little bit more than uh, in actuality. If you look at Johan Mir's bike, there's actually quite a bit of space between the front wheel and the front fairing. Uh, more than I expected, actually. So I'm really pushing that forward and, and sitting the front fairing and the front end really close on top of that front wheel. Now, it's not functional, right? Because you, there's no wheel travel here, which obviously you need for, for a MotoGP bike, but I think it makes the sketch look a little bit cooler. I'm also, uh, the, the windscreen is a little bit more tucked than it would be in the production MotoGP bike. Again, just stylizing, just for looks, uh, not necessarily functional. Then I get in and I'm laying in some of the framework and this the, the rest of that front body work. Block in some of the shadow lines and then I start putting in the front arrow pieces, right? These front wings. And they really uh, come out quite far. They're, it's almost like a mustache on this bike, but uh, super functional and, and they kind of look cool. Now I go through and I, I massage the shape of that front intake a little bit. On the production bike, it's just like a rectangle, which is fine and functional, but doesn't really look good. So I taper off the edges a little bit and give that some more style. You know, and at this point, I'm thinking about adding some extra arrow on that like bottom side of the fairing and the lower fairing, but realize that, yeah, that would totally destroy any kind of lean angle. So I move away from that and I end up fixing that later. And I extend out that little little arrow bit coming off the top of the tail. It gives it a little bit different look. Again, might not be functional, but hey, so be it. Uh, we're dropping lines here. And if it looks cool, we're just gonna run with it. And I also add a little bit of extra arrow, another wing on that tail, just to spice it up. Again, functionally, uh, the engineers would probably laugh me out of the room, but if it looks cool, again, we're gonna run with it for this particular sketch. The rest of it's pretty true to what his actual Johan Mir's bike is though. So uh, I give myself a little bit of leeway to take some liberties because most of the sketch is pretty true to his real bike. Ask for forgiveness, not permission. Then I come back in, again, I'm kind of bouncing around the sketch from front to back, then back to the front. And here I am looking at the front fairing, laying that front fairing in, or that front fender, blocking in some of the, some of the details and some of the shadows there and setting, starting to set things back in space using shadow. 
And now here I am back with a Prismacolor pencil, right? Full Prismacolor, it's not the very thin, so I am able to lay down a thicker line uh, to start to get some of those more contrasted reads, which again is super important when we're sketching anything. Uh, we we want to have a nice one, two, or a nice punchy read, right? Darker darks and light lights. And a Prismacolor allows us to go uh, really dark in the value range, almost to appear black. And then again, bouncing back to the rear wheel. And now I'm putting over the, the rear wheel cover and starting to get some more of that rear wheel detail in. Here I've made the, the tire a little bit thicker than you might find in an actual MotoGP bike. This is more of like a drag radial look, but it gives it a bit more substantial look for the sketch. And, and again, we're going for cool points here. The sketch doesn't need to go 200 miles an hour. And now just moving through the sketch, adding some additional details, starting to set things back into shadow even more. And I'm just slowly building up uh, the, the shadow reads and building up the values. Again, start light and then work up to, to full blacks. That way you have some, some space in between to make corrections if you don't get everything laid out properly the first time. So draw lightly and then work into your darker values. And here I am punching certain things out, making sure that the front wheel reads, punching out some of that front, front opening, and then adding some value to the sides of the fairing to show that it's wrapping underneath uh, and it isn't just a flat plane. And you can't forget about your grips. Obviously we need something to hold on to. I won't get too detailed with those and I'll end up just hitting those with a little bit of uh, uh, value and then adding a drop shadow for those to show them in space is always a nice touch. And here you see that I hold the pencil a little bit different for some of these softer transitions uh, to get some more of that subtle gradient or value change. And again, really just bouncing around the sketch to, to bring everything up in value and detail uh, to the same level. And by working back and forth, I'm able to make corrections as I'm going to make sure that the whole sketch is holding together before I get all the details blocked in on the front and then realize, oh, the back half is jacked up and have to restart. I just back or I just bounce back and forth between the sketch or between the different parts of the sketch and just slowly build it all up at the same time. And then you'll want to add in your drop shadow for the entire bike to really set this thing off in space. It really, without a drop shadow, the bikes kind of look like they're just floating in space, or at least they can. And we want our bikes to look like they're in real space. And going back over certain details to push things back into space, like those radiators behind the front fenders, and really trying to get these things to read. You know, I'm not super happy with the ellipse on the rear wheel, so I keep coming back and trying to correct that and get that to read like it's in proper perspective. It's not quite there, but you know, so be it. Sometimes you just got to keep running with it.
And this is my stab at Johan Mir's MotoGP bike. Hope you enjoyed this. If you did, like, subscribe, leave a comment, and we'll see you next time.